Hello, I'm Keith Fox, and welcome to the wrap-up of the first day of the ESC Congress here in Paris. We've had a really exciting day, and I'm delighted to be joined by two key experts. Uh, first of all, Sylvia Priori is not only an expert in basic science, but you're also one of the two chairs, scientific chairs of this Congress. And Susanna Price is a real expert, not just in aspects of medicine and emergency medicine, but much to tell the rest of cardiology. So we're going to be focusing on these areas. So first of all, Sylvia, we've just come out of the um, exciting inaugural session. Uh, there's a big buzz going around. And I know there was a buzz in some of the science. What are the things you want to pick on to talk about today? Yeah. So today is a day that is the opening. And we have decided to add uh, sessions of basic science uh, they prepared by our community of young scientists, the scientists of tomorrow. Yeah. And they have really made excellent selections in identifying topics that really tell us where the future of cardiology is going. For example, I've been impressed by the session on single cell genomics. So the, what are the frontiers that are open by the fact that we can now take a single cell and do the genome of the cells? And this is allowing, for example, to define that cells of the heart are not the same. They are in the very different one from the other, not each cell, but the, where they are coming from, for example. Sylvia, do you think we've got a lot to learn from our colleagues in oncology? Because, you know, many of our treatments are systemic, but the disease is local. Yeah. And we have done less in terms of recognizing surface epitopes, for example, and delivering therapy to where it really matters. Absolutely. And I actually think, you know, that our um, tendency to group patients by a symptom that is a macroscopic symptom yeah. is really today seen with the perspective of the technology that we have quite a limitation. Yes. And really the personalized medicine is going in that direction yeah. as the oncology have been doing. But, you know, um, their advantage is that they have access to the tumor, they get excised, and so they can really study much easier than cardiologists, yes, yes. Uh, you know, the single cell component. Yes, and then on bigger scale, later in this Congress, we're going to be seeing Mendelian randomization studies, which are really innovative and are going to open our eyes yeah. to the importance of lifelong exposure to particular, for example, low LDL situations. Yeah, and actually, you know, in, in, in the field, and we will see we, at the meeting, we have the, fir the first uh, trial, you know, that are creating this new category of genetic applications. And uh, I think that this is really, really, you know, 10 years ago, we were saying, well, genetic is a niche in cardiology. And now we are really getting to the application of genetics to acquired diseases and to predisposition to diseases. Now, now, a while ago, Sylvia, in terms of thinking about uh, coronary artery plaques and inflammation in plaques, there was a lot of interest in whether there was an infective element. There's been some science today. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You are touching right on the spot. Uh, well, actually, we have seen um, presentations that are saying and comparing the presence of the microbiote in the guts and in the plaque. And this study um, is presenting the fact that if we take patients with stable coronary artery disease and patients with acute coronary syndrome, and how they measure the microbiota in the lesion is by using the balloon of the angioplastic as a swap. And then they can identify the bacteria in the plaque and compare with the bacteria in the guts. Yeah. And then showing that actually, you know, in patients that have acute coronary syndromes, the type of bacteria that predominates are the one associated with the inflammation and pro-inflammatory yes. conditions. And is that because the, uh, the bacteria have caused it or because there is plaque destabilization yeah. and flux right. of macrocyte, yeah. uh, macrophages into the plaque? Yeah, the egg and the chicken issue. Yeah, the egg yeah. and the chicken. Yeah. But you know, it's just fantastic to know that we are now able, by that DNA analysis, to go in yeah. that direction yeah. and dissect it. You know, the, the first hypothesis of bacteria in the plaque 
goes back many years. Yeah. And then it fluctuated in uncertainties because the technology was not there. You, you touched on stable coronary artery disease. I just want to tease you a little bit because the ESC guideline today says this is not stable coronary artery disease, this is chronic coronary artery disease, because right. some of it is not stable. Absolutely, we have to change the nomenclature, yeah. <laughs> that's it. So thinking about the very acute phase, and I want to turn to Susanna now, uh, there have been some very inspirational presentations from here in France. Tell us a bit about them. Yeah, I have to congratulate you on the amazing session that you, you and Marco Roffi put together. I think um, the choice of Paris is no accident to have such an extraordinary session. The French uh, healthcare system is extraordinary. It's ranked right up there, number one in the world by the WHO. And your emergency systems are well rated across the whole world. So to build a whole uh, track today on emergency medicine was really inspired. And so we built a track? Yes. We built a track. Now tell us what it's, uh, uh, what it's discovered. So the track really, the areas that I found very interesting was looking at where we're going with cardiopulmonary resuscitation research. Because on the one end, we've got this super high technology, the understanding that it's not just about the heart and the lungs. We really need to be understanding cerebral perfusion. The patients really care that they don't just survive, but they survive intact. Yeah. And the application of extracorporeal support and uh, the different systems to provide and deliver this kind of very advanced resuscitation was discussed at length. Also looking at selective coronary and carotid perfusion in the context of cardiopulmonary resuscitation. And then we were brought right back to reality by uh, a review of where we've been with applied science and randomized controlled trials in the context of resuscitation, showing that almost all of them have been neutral. So the use of adrenaline, the use of oxygen, the use of mechanical uh, uh, devices for cardiopulmonary chest compressions. And it really drills down to defibrillation and early high quality cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So these are really important messages. There are uh, you know, centers in North America and elsewhere that have been saying something similar for a, uh, a while. But what can we in cardiology do and how can we integrate with other specialty areas to do it better? One of the things that came out of the session today was really the diversity of the application of cardiovascular medicine in the acute and emergency setting. Most patients don't meet a cardiologist first up. They'll meet, they'll meet a paramedic, a nurse specialist, maybe a surgeon, yeah. an emergency physician. And trying to understand how we as cardiologists can work with our colleagues, we don't work in silos. And actually, it should be more patient-centric to deliver the appropriate care for that patient at that time. And we should be working with our colleagues to help educate and train them when we can, or step up and deliver what we need to deliver when we're requested to. So again, we're coming to the team approach. You know, uh, the practice of medicine is not an individual. It is a team approach. And there's that good evidence that this impacts positively on, on outcomes. Yes, I know. I would just add that the, um, one of the sessions we had today was an absolute uh, example of that, was, which related to how France in Paris and Nice responded to the terrorist attacks and hearing from real experts in the field of emergency medicine of how they coordinate care outside in the field, but also to make sure that if a patient presents, for example, with a STEMI in the context of this, they shouldn't be de denied evidence-based care. So it's how to coordinate both outside and within the hospital so all of the patients that need care as far as possible can get the best care they can. So Susanna, finally, from all those, do you want to pick one highlight, one gem that you want to convey to everybody? I think what I would take away was the comment that was made that in the chaos, the, the organized chaos of the Paris terrorist attack, that the cardiologists were able to step up and be useful and to ask the emergency physicians how they could help and actually do things that were genuinely helpful. And that we are not just limited to ST elevation myocardial infarction. Actually, we're all clinicians, we're all yes. physicians, and we all have something to offer. Yes, so we need to think more broadly, have an integrated approach to treating that patient and the acute care of that patient. Completely. Sylvia, just pick out one or two highlights that you want to uh, leave the audience with from today. 
Yes, I think that uh, what we got out of the basic science track today and in general what we will be hearing about in the basic science uh, during the meeting is the fact that whenever we think that something is distant and far away from the clinics, within a very rapid time we will see it transformed into something clinically useful. So medicine is changing. The pipeline for drug that we think is dry, there is not much innovation, is going to change in the post-genomic area, and we are in the post-genomic so area. So science is going to drive the change, and it's wonderful that the cardiologists of tomorrow are grasping it are and there. helping to drive it. Absolutely. So my thanks to Sylvia Priori, to Susanna Price. Uh, this is just a taste of some of the exciting things that have been happening today and uh, we'll have much more to talk about tomorrow. Thank you all.